Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Now, DHL Group is extending its share buyback program to 2025 with volumes increased by between 1 and 4 billion euros. That's after the forecast for 2024 for the company came in below the estimates. Tobias Mayer, DHL Group CEO, joins us now. Tobias, thank you very much for your time. The forecast then for 2024 coming in slightly more conservative than, than some of the analysts had expected below the estimates. What is, what is behind that a relatively cautious forecast for the year? Yeah, it is simply the the relatively slow start that we are seeing and the outlook for the coming months for the first quarter, first half just doesn't look so bright. Um, That's on the macroeconomic side, uh, but also on on trade. So we see a certain slowness. It's bottoming out. So uh, there's clearly, you know, not the free fall that we have seen in the middle of last year. But we are not at a stage where we we see that stimulus, particularly on the B2B side of our business, you know, express cargo being shipped uh, from Asia. Within Europe, there's also a lot of weakness in the B2B sector. B2C, the trend very much intact again, so that's clearly a positive uh, in our business portfolio. But the B2B side, the recovery seems to be slower. What does that mean then for the outlook for, for volumes then, Tobias? So what we have seen last year um, on the volume side is a, is a drop, particularly on the air freight, also on the Air Express side, that came from the highs of the pandemic. Um, so that is also very clear. And we anticipated that, that on the rate side particularly, we would see um, a decrease again. So that is no surprise. But the volume on the B2B side, that is what is softer than we originally expected towards the end of the year, um, also into this year. Um, Um, The B2B trading is not really picking up. So this is what's making us a bit cautious, at least for the first half of this year. Okay, and you talk about the trade slowness that you're seeing. You say it's not as pronounced as as it was last year. You think maybe it's starting to bottom. Where, where Where is it most pronounced, though, in terms of the slowdown in trade? So we do see some weakness intra-Europe um, that is a bit uh, stronger than we, we did expect. Um, so there's uh, some contraction on, on B2B shipments. We see this on the road freight side. We see it also on our Air Express offering. So it is quite broad, the European weakness in trading. There's also the trades out of China, for instance, um, towards the US. That is something we've seen for a while now. So these are the main two spots where our expectations for the last months have not been met. And I think we just need to wait a bit longer until the interest rate hike is absorbed by the broader economy. We see some more activity also in the real estate sector, which obviously influences, especially in Asia, consumer confidence as well. So this is the part that is lacking expectations. Again, on the B2C side, um, our e-commerce business doing quite well, structural trend intact. That's the positive. Okay, and you're announcing a share buyback program to be increased to 4 billion euros. 4 billion euros is is the target. Is there there more you can do in terms of returning cash to shareholders? So we have good ways to deploy capital. We also want to definitely continue investing, especially in our e-commerce business. So that's an area which provides structural growth. We want to be part of that. Uh, We want to grow that in our shipping activities, last mile activities, but also beyond that on the warehousing side returns so these are areas that we're interested we obviously want to continue to invest in our express business which is quite capital intensive Um, so we have different ways to deploy capital also smaller M&A is something that we're looking for up to mid-size preferably so we have good ways to deploy capital share buyback is only one of them well, you talk about M&A, really interesting, because Deutsche Bahn, which of course is Germany's national railway company, looking potentially to sell its Schenker Logistics unit, at one point valued at 20 billion euros. DHL reportedly in the mix in terms of offers. Have, have you made a firm offer for that business, Tobias? No, we haven't even indicated interest. So um, that's a news that wasn't quite accurate. Um, We didn't uh, indicate an interest early January when that was due. Uh, We looked at it. You know, it's a wedding that is supposed to happen. We are not going to be the husband. Um, As I laid out, we just have other more attractive ways in our mind to deploy capital of our shareholders. And that's what we're going to focus on. Oh, so, OK, you're not going to be the husband in, in that marriage. So to be clear, Tobias, you are not interested in Schenker. You're not going to be making an, a, an offer for that business. Correct. Wasn't interested, aren't interested. Hmm. OK. When it comes to the Red Sea crisis, what impact are you seeing there, Tobias? 
So we do see, obviously, the concern around um, the impact it has on this shipping route, the physical danger to um, merchandise, to, to merchant ships. Um, most shipping lines currently choose to go around the Cape of Good Hope, adding 10 to 12 days to the voyage. That obviously has a challenge in some supply chains, but it doesn't have the same impact than we had uh, during the pandemic, where the overall demand supply balance was, was very tight. That's not the situation we're currently in in ocean shipping. So it has some impact, um, definitely something that we need to work with our customers to ensure that critical cargo is there on time and we don't have supply chain disruptions. But it doesn't have that macro impact on rates that we've seen during the pandemic with other disruptions. And, and closer to home, Germany seeing a, a number of train driver strikes, seeing some disruption at some of the airports there. How is, how is that impacting uh, your business? How are you navigating that challenge? Yeah, well, it, it is an interesting environment. Um, we have more uh, labor actions, I think, than we have seen for a long, long time, not only here in Germany, but, but across. I think it's driven by the high inflation that obviously impacted real wages for, for many folks. So it is an area of concern, but we have managed so far, I think, pretty well. Um, we have to deal with it. Uh, there are certain disruptions on the mode of transport, also strikes of farmers blocking highways and so forth. It's is obviously not helping. It's a challenge, an everyday challenge for operational folks to keep cargo moving. But that's what we're there mm. for. That's our job. Okay. So it's a challenge that we're up to. Tobias Mayer, DHL Group CEO, on the back of those earnings with the outlook for the rest of the year. Thank you so much for your time.